Don't change that channel because an episode of WCTV featuring Special Olympics, State FFA Conference, and the North Central Conference Art Show will be right back. Abby, have you heard about the Olympians from Webster City? Are you talking about Sean Johnson? I love her. Uh, no. She doesn't even go here. I'm talking about WCHS's very own Special Olympics team. This past week, 10 talented students tested their skills and strength against other area Olympians. Rachel Powers has the stats of this year's competition. Rachel? When you think of sports, I'm guessing you think of football, track, basketball, right? Well, there's another very important activity that most students overlook, Special Olympics. There were 10 students here at WCHS that participated at the Special Olympics on Thursday, April 16th at Dodger Stadium in Fort Dodge. These students took home 24 ribbons, which showed their hard work really paid off. Well, the first thing we did every day was to practice to exercise to get our muscles warmed up and so we didn't have cramps and then we went out to the track just a couple of times because the weather was so bad mm -hmm. and the rest of the time we either ran in the halls or practiced passing off the baton in the hallways. Special Olympics here in Iowa is a nonprofit organization that has been around since 1968. There are participants from all over Iowa which participate in the 22 Olympic type events. Last year alone, there are more than 11,000 participants that competed in the Olympics here in Iowa. The Special Olympics makes a positive difference in the lives of the athletes, families, and the community, which makes it that much more worthwhile. My favorite part was um, running and throwing the softball. I got second in one meter dash, and I came in third of softball throw. And I, li I like to say one thing though. Go links, go links, go. Running the 100 meter run and the softball throw, and I got two blue ribbons, first place in the 100 meter run and first and another first place in the softball throw. And I'm going to state. Go, go Cyclones. When I was in the running events in the softball throw, I got second in the softball. I got one uh, first in the 100 meter run. My favorite part of Special Olympics was running and competing and winning three blue ribbons on the same day. Here in Iowa, there are many ways to get involved with the Special Olympics, such as coaches, athletes, volunteers, and youth leaders. I'm Rachel Powers reporting for WCTV, and if you are an athlete looking to compete, a volunteer looking to make a difference, or just looking to have fun, you better get involved in next year's Special Olympics. Thanks, Rachel. I'll be sure to get involved next year. Some Webster City students had a run-in with another type of Olympian. At the state FFA convention held last week, FFA students got a chance to listen to keynote speaker John Sunkiss, who's a bone cancer survivor on the Paralympic ski team. Brady Harst has more with what went on down in Des Moines. This past Thursday and Friday, some of our school's finest FFA members took part in the state FFA convention. So, just what is the State FFA Convention? State FFA is a group of, a uh, large group of individuals that are in FFA that get together down in Des Moines to compete in contests and to have a good time. It looks like that was an event filled a couple of days. With all those events, they must have been excited in the week before that they went. I'm looking forward to meeting new people during State FFA. I like State FFA because you get to spend time with friends and get to know new people. I would say they're ridiculously amazing outfits. It looks like all of the FFA members were extremely excited to go down to the convention, but they needed a leader, and that's where Mr. Veltheisen would come in. So just what is his involvement in State FFA? 
My actual duties for state convention is, of course, I set up the itinerary for the kids, um, make sure all the students, our students, are where they're supposed to be if they're in a contest or watching sessions um, and things like that during the three days that we're down there, and of course, make sure I keep track of all the kids and they don't get lost in Des Moines. The benefits of state FFA convention is um, the older members definitely the benefit is that they continue to develop their leadership skills um, throughout the conference by going to workshops. Uh, they also have an opportunity to talk to different colleges and ag businesses in the state of Iowa. They have a career show is what we call it there. Uh, and really the younger members, the, the great benefit is it's kind of their first chance to truly see how big FFA is and, and over 12,000 FFA members that are here in the state of Iowa. Um, so a chance to connect with them, see how big the organization is and start hopefully, hopefully networking with other students um, from other schools and other FFA chapters. All of the FFA members have gained a lot of experience from the past couple of days. I'm sure all the state FFA members and Mr. V would like to see you at state FFA next year. I'm Brady Harfs and I wish I went to state FFA. Well then, Brady, you better get a move on that if you want to go next year. Well, speaking of art... Abby, we weren't even talking about art. Oh, well, now that we are, last week you may not have noticed that students from all of the conference towns gathered at our school to take part in the 20th Annual North Central Co Conference Art Show. Emily sent and painted us a picture of what exactly happened at this special event. Emily? We're back to where it all began 20 long years ago. The North Central Conference Art Show was first held here at WCHS and is the event that every artist in the North Central Conference looks forward to all year round. There are many young artists presenting their artwork from Algona, Bishop Garrigan, Clarion Goldfield, Clear Lake, Eagle Grove, Hampton Dumont, Humboldt, Isle Falls, St. Ed's, and Webster City. The art show is hosted at one of the schools annually. This year, with Webster City hosting the event, our teachers, Mr. Nigemeyer and Miss Ewing, had to add a couple extra hours onto their day to make it all happen. Um, more work than you would ever imagine. When you find out that your school is going to host it, you have one year to get ready, and the very first thing you have to do is set the date, which can actually be tough because you got to get all the schools to agree to the same date. Then you got to figure out what you're going to do for presenters, and you have to let all the conference schools know when you're going to have your setup day and when the students are going to come. That's the first part. Once you set those dates, and you kind of get that on the calendar. Once you have the dates set, the next item is to um, plan to purchase the awards, which every stu every teacher has to do. Then also, you need to set up your banquet. You've got to decide what you're going to do for a banquet, who's going to cater it, how many people are going to be there. Um, you also have to start thinking about which artwork you're going to take. Um, You've got to talk to students in your building. Other student or other teachers talk to their students and try to figure out how they're going to select the 15 pieces that each school can bring. And you're in contact with all the teachers throughout the year so they understand what you've got planned. And you've confirmed your pieces, then it's time to contact the art teachers and do the setup, which can take a lot of work. So you have to bring all the display materials in and do the setup. Um, all teachers come and do that. And then you also have to confirm all of your presenters to make sure that they're going to agree to be there on time to do the sessions that you want to do for the students. And um, the last thing you do is you double check your checklist. Everything you needed to get done during the year, you double check it and make sure everything's in place. And you pray for the best on the day of the art show that you didn't miss anything. All of the hard work wasn't just with the teachers. The students in the North Central Conference also had to put a lot of time into getting their artwork to the show. It also isn't just for students in Webster City. The eight other schools in the North Central Conference attended this art show also. Each school can bring 15 pieces of work to the show. They can range from paintings, drawings, jewelry, and sculptures. Here at WCHS, the decision is made by Mr. Nigemeyer and Miss Ewing. They do this by making a list as the year goes on, and as it gets closer, they sit down and judge each piece. Webster City also has the tradition of winning the overall Judge's Choice Award for eight times in the past nine years. This year, Andrew Begalow made it number nine and his second year in a row. How do you feel about winning the art show two years in a row? Well, I'm pretty happy with my work, and uh, it took me about two months to make it, and uh, hard work paid off, so I'm really happy with it. Kathleen Moriarty won one of the Judges' Choice Awards. Lucy Kai also won one of the Best in Show Awards with the, her two-dimensional work. I like the art show, and I got I made the umbrella, and I got the second dimensional. 
I feel happy. Art show wasn't just to get your artwork judged or to see art from other students. There were also presentations given by Craig Keenis on photography, Tom Staycliffe on sculptures, and Ron Disnail on pewter casting demonstrations. So as you're walking down the hallway, make sure you take a minute to stop and look at this artwork. I'm Emily Slyton reporting for WCTV, and it looks like this show's wrapping up and won't be back for another 10 years. Thanks, Emily. Good job to everyone who participated in the conference art show, and congratulations to Kathleen Moriarty for winning the Judges Award for her acrylic painting, Lucy Kai, who won the Best of Show Two-Dimensional Award with her drawing triptych, and Andrew Bagaloff, who won the Best of Show Overall Award for his ink drawing. Good job, guys. And good luck to everyone in getting involved in a sporting event tonight, including the members of the track team who made it down to the re Drake Relays today and tomorrow in Des Moines. If you're attending prom Saturday night, be make sure you have tons of fun and remember to be smart while you dance the night away. And don't forget your ticket to get into the door. We'll leave you with some video of a couple of rookies at the anchor desk last week. over to Mr. Allers for a few, for a first, <laughs> let's toss it over to Mr. Allers for our first ever teacher feature. <laughs> <laughs> 